There is always a demolition before there's a renovation. When you stop looking at the circumstance and look at what you can do with who you are in that circumstance, then everything changes. Emotions do not have intellect. That's what it is. It's understanding the concept that emotions cannot think. So as real as they feel, they have to be bounced off the truth or they will have you all over the place. Emotions cannot be the engine. They have to be the caboose. Everything that happens in my life will work together for good. And there he is. What's going on? How are you? Good. How are you, man? Good, good, good. Just just taking a seat and excited to talk to you for, for I, a bit. It's good I to love meet it. You. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to a creative force, an, an, an entrepreneur, uh, and an author of a new book called Divine Disruption for YouTube. We're going to link that in the description below to go check it out. A new friend of the channel, Mr. Anthony Evans. Welcome aboard, man. Thank you very much, man. It's good to, good to be with you. I appreciate your time. So there's so many ways. I was diving in your story. There's so many ways to take this conversation, but I thought starting with entrepreneurship is a good good place because most of my audience are entrepreneurs. Got it. Yeah. And in, in looking at your story and the music production company that you started and just when you started your, your journey feeling like you didn't belong, you didn't quite fit in and trying to find your place. And then you decide, I'm just going to bet on myself. I'm going to launch my own production company. I'm going to be yeah. my own manager. I'm going to be my own booking agent. <laughs> I'm going to do it all myself because I don't quite fit into the mold that everybody wants to put me in. A lot of people, when they're, at, when they're at that phase, they quit, they give up. They say, like, why can't, why can't it just work out? And instead of taking on those roles, they just stop. So what, what was the thing that made you say, I'm going to figure out a way to do everything to start making progress on my dream? Well, it wasn't necessarily easy because I, <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate the hype. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> but it wasn't necessarily easy at the beginning to be told no and, and you don't fit and all those things. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm a, I'm a musician. I'm in gospel music. But earlier on, there's such a there's like a real divided line in, in contemporary and gospel music, especially earlier on. So not fitting was was not a good feeling to have the industry go. This just doesn't work. But I knew that there was a for lack of a better. I'll say this because I'm on here with entrepreneurs. There was a market for what I do, but commercially it didn't work like do you know what i'm saying so i knew mm -hmm. that there was a mark i knew there was a market for what i did people were asking me to come sing even though the radio wasn't playing my music so i i i just decided i can't allow an industry and radio um guys who aren't playing my music to determine whether i'm gonna actually go do what i know that i've been gifted at and i know that i'm called to and all that stuff so i, I also have a, parents that are very much been told no most of their adult lives because of what they're doing and they figured out ways around it so i watched that and didn't realize i was um, taking on so much of them that, i mean i'm their dna obviously but taking on so much of the mindset that they had which is create your own path nobody can tell you that you can't do something especially when you know that you're good at it and you know you're called to it an industry doesn't get to decide whether you get to do it sometimes it gets to decide the capacity in which you do it at uh, uh, and, and the brevity in which you start to do it, but overall it, it can't decide. So I just started making the calls and going the places and learning how to do whatever it was like the, the booking or the, the lighting and the things that you mentioned, the buses, I had to figure that all out on my own. And I had no idea that I was, that a production company was being birthed back then. I was just doing, I was just rejected and it's so hard, but I didn't know that if I wouldn't have been rejected back then, I wouldn't have the company that I have now. And so where do you get the strength from to go and disrupt the industry to say, Hey, this <laughs> industry wasn't made for me yet and what I want to do. So I'm going to make my own path because people love that idea, especially entrepreneurs. We love that concept. I don't want to listen to the man or I don't want to have a boss. I want to do it my right. way. But then you start like, it's hard to clear a path. You got to chop down trees and push things out. of like, it's really difficult and you don't see results at the beginning. So where do you get the strength from or where did you get the strength from to say, I don't care. I'm going to go off and do it. Well, a couple of things. One, my faith is always going to play a role in, in me finding strength to keep moving and keep pressing on. So my, I'm a man of faith. I believe I don't push my faith on people, but it has been such a vital part of my, who I am as a human being that I just tell my story and that's always going to be a part of it. So knowing that there is a purpose and a plan that's bigger than me that God has set before me is huge. But also in addition to that, be, well, because of that, redefining what success was to me 
made me push forward because I became a pursuer of internal peace. And part of my internal peace was, am I doing what I know I'm called to do? Am I doing it excellently? Even if nobody's watching, like how excellent can I get this? How I became a pursuer of that. And then that leads you to quote unquote, what we consider to be success sometimes, which is people's eyes on you, which is not necessarily the, the wrong infrastructure and a bunch of people's eyes on you can feel like failure. I mm-hmm. had to get my mindset Anthony, are you doing what you love? Are you doing it excellently? And are you, is peace accompanying that? And once I started to move that direction, the quote unquote success followed that um, b- because my definition of success changed. My, you know, my. Yeah, my, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Walk me through how people can find peace. Is it is it prayer? Is it conversations? Is it time alone? Is it lots of time in the shower thinking like how do, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. how do you get to that point of peace because i think if you said how many people in america right now have peace it's not going to be that many so how do we get to peace i think it it varies because everybody's so different but i can speak obviously what what it meant to me it means man there's so many different variables for me i actually a huge part of my thing was getting my mind and emotions set because i'm an emotional dude we're artists so an emotion can throw you off track for for 3 weeks if, if you don't let it so i had to i obviously made sure that my relationship with god is is good and i'm i'm connected and and very intentional about that and in addition to that a big part of that for me was um therapy like i got into therapy and you know it's like i'm like big strong dude i don't I don't need therapy that's kind of my mind at first but then i was like yeah you do <laughs> you know what i mean so for me that was like having a trainer at the gym when weights are getting stacked on the rack like having somebody tell you this is the way now, i can't take the weight away but i can tell you the proper form when lifting it i can tell you um how many reps you need i can I can help you get it all mapped out in front of you so that you um, so that you, you will get the most results out of this out of this heavy lifting. So that's what it was for me, my relationship with God. And for those people who are um, watching, just knowing that there is something greater than you at play. There's something greater than what's happening in your life in, at this moment at play and understanding, which I do, is that the, the bigger picture and God's promise to me and all of us is that he's going to use all those things together for our good. So I'm a faith guy. Sorry. I got to, I yeah. got to, I'm not sorry. No, I just always going to bring that in for everybody. Don't, watching, don't apologize. Like, it's great. I, yeah. I mean, you've talked a lot about belief, which I love. Yes. I think the biggest problem in the world is that people don't have enough belief. So when you are talking about, you know, you're meant for something more, you know, you're meant to serve and to help and to share your gifts. How do you maintain the belief? When the voice in your head is telling you, but, but you're not getting results, yeah. Anthony, but, but yeah. nobody wants you on their station, Anthony. Like, how do you keep that belief strong when that internal voice is so negative sometimes? The way I've kept it strong is by bouncing everything that comes into my head and my heart off of the truth. Hmm. And the truth to me is understanding that everything that happens in my life will work together for good. So when I have the feelings or, or knowing that like, God's going to finish what he started in me. Like, that's a huge thing because there are moments where I, I mean, I'm the biggest, like, uh, you know, I feel left. I feel lost. I feel abandoned. It's hard. Today's hard. I'm that guy all day long. It's, it's, it's kind of weird, but I'm just that emotional. It's understanding. Basically the bottom line is that emotions do not have intellect. That's Mm -hmm. what it is. It's understanding the concept that emotions cannot think. So as real as they feel, they have to be bounced off the truth or they will have you all over the place. Emotions cannot be the engine. They have to be the caboose. Period. I love it. So the book is called Divine Disruption. YouTube, we're going to link it in the description below. It's interesting, the choice of words, because it, it in disruption forces you to go on a different path. Yes, and the life that maybe you thought you were going to live is not the one that is actually the one you have to go off and live. And I think people struggle with it. I, I, you mentioned therapy, and I see that you know you lost eight family members in two years. Mm-hmm. Just crazy in researching your story. It's like, how is this for me? Like, that is an easy voice to go to, right? Like, how does yes. this serve me? How is this God's plan? How? Like, how does that make any sense? But it's it's a disruptive plan. So talk me through why disruption is so important. Man, 
that's I will talk you through that. But when you mentioned that the eight family members and all that stuff, it's that's still hard. I'm like, God, for real? Like, I, did we did we need to go this far? You know what I mean? I, I I didn't obviously didn't want any of that to happen, but life throws us curveballs. That is what that is what happens, and it's kind of what are we gonna do with those curveballs? So I mentioned. Um, you know, you can't build a foundation. You can't build a foundation during a storm. It has to be before or after. And I, I really believe that. So um, I, I really believe that disruptions are going to happen. That's that's the bottom line. And, and are you retrofitted for those disruptions? I, I Half the time I live in um, Los Angeles and the home I'm in, the foundation has been retrofitted for earthquakes. It has been the, it, the earthquakes were thought about before the house was built. So. Um, now if there's an earthquake, yes, I may have to go put pictures back, back up on the wall and, and figure that out. But because it was built with the earthquakes in mind, it can withstand them in a way that something that wasn't built with them in mind can, can't. So my, my, uh, my encouragement to everybody watching is to know that disruptions are going to come. It is going to be a problem. And unfortunately, that is what it is, but we have the option to retrofit our hearts. We have the option to retrofit our minds. We have the option to retrofit our emotions so that when they come, it doesn't negate the shaking, but it, but it, it changes what the shaking does to our lives. Mm. That's what this book is about. And it's a family conversation. It is a, it's me, my siblings, my three siblings, sorry, you can't say <laughs> me, my three siblings and my father. And it's like welcoming you to our table and talking about how, even though we all have crazy different personalities, how we handled the disruptions and how we retrofitted our hearts and our lives to, um, so that the shaking didn't, de- didn't destroy us. And, and also, sorry, I'm just rambling on. I had this great. No, no, it's great. When I have coffee, Evan, it's like, <laughs> hold on, here we go. You know what Let's I mean? go. It's Give like, it, yeah, we're we're ready. Ready. yeah. Preach. No, 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 no. You know, I, I, for a while I was a big, well, still now I watched Fixer Upper quite a bit. You know, I watched Chip and Joe. A lot of people watch Chip and Joe. And I noticed before any, before those beautiful renovations happened, there always had to be a demolition. There is always a demolition before there's a renovation. So now when disruptions happen, even though it doesn't negate how much they hurt, it doesn't negate, uh, it doesn't negate any of that. I look at them as a renovation is coming. And I don't know what that's going to be, but a renovation is coming. And that stacked on top of my faith and knowing that the end of the, at the end of the day, I'm going to see my mother again. I'm going to see my other seven family members again. That when coupled with the understanding that a demolition comes before a renovation helps me to push through the disruptions in a, in a different way. And what I love about the message in the book is that it's not only that disruptions will come, but that they're divine. Yeah. Like they're yeah. guiding you somewhere. It's not that you just have to handle it. It's like it's actually taking you to somewhere that you need to be, which is a total mind twist on a lot of these negative. We see them as negative things, which they are, but it's like it's actually making you stronger and it's guiding you to a different spot. 100%. I believe that certain things happen on a, on a level that we can't understand. It, uh, certain things, most things, almost all things I think happen on a level that we cannot cognitively understand. But when you stop looking at the circumstance and look at what you can do with who you are in that circumstance, then everything changes because you understand it's divine. You know, like I'll, I'll use Simone Biles for an example. She is 4'10", a tiny human being. I'm sure it's hard for her to reach stuff in her house. And that's the way she was made. That's the way she was divinely made. For some odd reason, she's 4'10". She can't reach stuff in her house. I'm sure pushing the pedals in her car is hard at times. You know, everything is different because of the way she's built. But if you ask her, do you wish you were taller? I bet you she'd hold out 50, 60, hundreds of medals and trophies and go, what do you think? Hmm. Because she has figured out a way to maximize the way that she was made, that she was divinely made one way. And instead of going, instead of trying to join the basketball team and putting herself in a position to be constantly feeling like a failure, she has taken the way she is made and figured out a way to be a champion with that. And I believe we all have the option of looking at what's divinely happening in our lives and deciding how are we going to become a champion with these divine circumstances that are that I've been put in, sometimes without me wanting to. She didn't ask to be 410. She just figured out a way to become a champion at 410. Man, I think if you ask most people, they're going to be saying, I wish I was like this person, that person, taller yeah. like him and yeah. had more followers like her and could sing like Anthony and <laughs> all of these things, right? How do we how do we get rid of that voice? 
getting that that voice starts with the the making sure that you silence you can hear the voice of your uniqueness when you silence the voice of comparison hmm. when you silence the i wish i was more like and that allows the voice to be to become louder of but this is how you are made this is d- what divinely is going on in your life at this moment and what can you do to maximize that this book although i actually would prefer to not have a book and have my mother back obviously because this book would not this book would wouldn't have happened um but because those circumstances are things i can i cannot control they're totally out of my control i want my mother here so bad when she passed i remember thinking we have to honor her legacy in a way that somehow brings some kind of justice and legacy out of this moment and that is why we are sitting down that's why we sat down and wrote this book and I I look at the book and although I want my mom back, I'm like, this is what you do when you take a circumstance that you can't change and you make the most of it. Because now my mother's story and our story will be able to touch countless amount, amounts of people because we looked at the scenario and said, what can we do with this? What can we do with this? I love it. You're, you're talking to probably one of my greatest fears. My parents are both alive right now. Mm-hmm. They're on the wall behind me. Like, that's hey, my mom. Oh, that's my pictures. dad. That's me when I'm like eight years old. Uh, and so I, I don't know how I'm going to handle it um, when at, at some point it happens. But, you, you know, the way you guys have done it has just been a, a huge inspiration. Um, you. Do you have triggers? Like, how do you catch it when when the voice you mentioned you're an emotional guy? It's easy to get lost in those emotions and they could derail you for weeks if you let them. And I think a lot of people let themselves get trapped. How do you? How do you catch it and pull yourself out of the spiral? Are there triggers? Are there words? Is there a feeling? Like, how do you pull yourself out when it happens? Oh, yeah, there's 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 a lot of them. I have to understand, man. First of all, I had to identify the triggers in, in my life. Sometimes walking through my own life was like walking through a minefield. I didn't know what were the things that set me off. And I think a lot of times we I have friends that are like that. But I'll talk about me. You you there are buried minds in your soul and in your emotions. And I, the way that I have been able to come to peace with those or dig those up and, 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 um, uh, sorry, uh, unset them. Uh, that's not the right word. I was looking for <laughs> basically dig them up and, and not make them triggers anymore was I had to be willing to do the work, mm-hmm. digging up a trigger, digging up a mine. It takes work. And, and, um, d- d- sorry, my brain just, it's coffee. No, you're doing it's, it. Your question is coffee great. makes me like. Wah! <laughs> <laughs> it's great. What's the, what's the word? With, oh, diffuse, diffuse. Sorry, when you, you diffuse go. a bomb or diffuse a trigger, I have to dig something up. That takes work, and that's how I got to the point. And it's still, it's still hard for me because there are certain things that still feeling devalued is a trigger of mine mm-hmm. because of what happened earlier in my career uh, and things that happened in childhood. Everybody was doing their best, but feeling devalued is a, is a problem for me. So I diffuse it and sometimes it'll reconnect itself and you have to constantly diffuse those things. But once you realize that those explosions hurt you and everybody around you, then you are more likely to want to, when you want to be healthy and you don't want to be the guy who pops off every two seconds and you realize that's a distraction to you, everybody in your life, that will encourage you to do the work. And for me, doing the work is obviously my relationship with, with the Lord, but also therapy. Like, I had to dig down and figure out how do I diffuse this? Somebody help me. Teach me how to diffuse this because it's distracting. I love it. Well, we value you, Anthony. And, yeah, no. And, uh, get, <laughs> that wasn't you know, behind guy. the scenes. So, you, you know, your, your PR people, whatever, reached out to me and they said, hey, who do you want to have on to talk about the book? It's like, I want Anthony. Hey, thanks. <laughs> so it was great. It's great to have you. I, I, I love I love that you talk about therapy as well and mental health and uh, there's still a big stigma around it and just a willingness to ask for help and to seek a professional to help guide you through some of these things Yeah, yeah. for, for somebody who might be on the fence or might be struggling or might be going through their own emotional demons right now. What would you tell them about therapy and, and how it's helped you? I think that it, I think that you taking the step in that direction. And sometimes I, I've had a few therapists where the first one, I was like, this isn't working. This isn't right. But I think that your biggest accomplishments, your biggest delivery from whatever it is that's going on inside of you, um, your biggest joy is always tied to you going, being willing to go to the other side of your fear. 
you, when you go to the other side of your fear, you get to experience things that you never would have thought. And for a lot of people, therapy is like, why would I go digging down? I don't want to stir that stuff up, but it, it's there. Like it's, it's there. So you might as well get rid of it as opposed to burying it. So I would encourage you to just, just take step one. Don't think about all the tears you may shed. Just think about step one, which is trying to find it. And there's so many opportunities now, like mental health is such a thing. There's so many opportunities now for you to just take a step and reach out. I mean, you could talk, you could do it on talk space for a second just to feel out how's this going to work for me. But I would say if you're fearful of it, your, your, your biggest joy is on the other side of that fear. What was there something that pushed you over the edge in terms of like there's there's fear, there's hesitancy to go and and have that first session. And if you think back to who Anthony was before, maybe somebody suggested go talk to the therapist. And you're like, I'm not going to talk to the therapist. Like, yeah, yeah, what, yeah. What was the the push over to say, you know what? Okay, now I'm going to do it. The push was when I was I was literally in the shower, which is too much information. But I was in the shower, and tears were coming coming out of my eyes. I didn't even know why, and I couldn't mm. stop them. Mm. And I thought something is trying to get out, like. Something inside of you wants out and you need to figure out what that is and dig. And I had general ideas, but that that was when I was like, I got to figure I got to figure this out because it was starting to bleed everywhere. Like everybody knew me as the the guy. Everybody close to me knew me as like, what mood is he in today? Is he going to pop off? Da, da, da. Like it's that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And being known as that person and also being heavily emotional all the time. And my work was suffering. I would go sing places and it was like a shell of a person was singing to people. Um, I remember one time I went to an audience and I started telling them everything that was going on in my life. Cause I was like, and they were looking at me like, no, just saying this is too much. Like, we don't want to know all that. And I thought you got to figure this out, man. Cause you're an emotional wreck. So that's for me is what, that's what started it is when I realized I wasn't operating at, at all, at all c- cylinders. What do you think is the, most important daily habit you have to, to keep you on track, to keep you in peace, like you call it? The most important daily habit that I have is spending, and it's hard for me because I'm, I'm move, move a lot, is starting my day and trying to start it in, in solitude and in silence and not snatching my phone, spending time acknowledging mm-hmm. the Lord, acknowledging God in my life, having a moment of, of prayer. And then I just right in a close second to that is being active. Like hmm. I did not know how much that mattered until later in my life when I'm active or thoughts are like having those, um, having time for my brain to just space out and to be active. That helps me get, get, get centered. Just making time for me before I grab the phone or grab, you know, the computer or whatever that that's, that's huge. Cool. I wonder, I wonder if you could lead us. I didn't idea is coming to me. This is divine. Yes. Yes. Disruption Give it to coming me. through. Give it to me. Evan. Le- le- I wonder if you could lead us in a blessing, in a song, in a prayer, like whatever's flowing for other people who've been watching this live or on the YouTube replay, who feel stuck, who feel like they're capable of more, who, who are tired of being tired and frustrated and just want to release and, and, and find their true selves and go on. Like, is there something you can lead us in? Just speak yeah. to those people. How about I do a, I'll do a little bit of both. I'll give you okay. a little, little bit of a, a song that I, oh, I love singing all the time to remind myself that no matter what's going on externally, I'm at peace on the inside. And then I'll lead us in a, in a prayer too. I love let's that. Go. Let's go, man. Let's, let's go. go. Yeah. L- l- little bit of both. <laughs> when peace like a river tendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my love, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is
Lord, for everybody on here that's watching, for everybody who will watch, I pray that you will bring a peace that surpasses all of our understanding into our lives and in all the chaos and the disruptions that we have personally, the disruptions we've had globally, civil, I mean, all the, all the disruptions that are happening right now. I pray that you would bring a peace and start to show us a little glimpse of the hope that lies in trusting in you, working all things together for our good. For those on here who know you, for those on here who have are new to this, I pray, God, that now that supernaturally that you will give them a peace and an understanding of you working all things together for good. Open our eyes to what is truly in store for all of us if we just hang on tight. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Anthony Evans in the house, ladies and gentlemen. The book is called Divine Disruption. Go pick it up, YouTube. Again, it's in the description below. Dude, I appreciate you so much. That was beautiful. You set me on for my day. And it's, it's just a tremendous joy to be in your presence. Yo, I loved it, Evan. Thank you for having me, man. And I, I've, I've loved following you. And I, you inspire me constantly. So I'm glad I could give a little bit back. If you want to see the one-on-one -on -one I did with Bishop T.D. Jakes, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe. And I'll see you there. Well, I think first thing you have to realize, you, there comes a point that your brain becomes more important than your hands. And you have to figure out what point that is. Uh, good leadership is working yourself out of a job. 